Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about a study tip called concept mapping. Okay, so concept mapping is a really, really easy way to help you study any type of disease process um, from pathophysiology and what to do as a nurse. Okay, so I have a belief that you can really do any kind of concept map and you can really look at every single type of disease process using three different questions. A, what is it? B, um, how do you treat it? Okay, and C, what do we teach them? All right, so I'm going to go into those three questions and how to set up concept maps. Okay, so what is a concept map? Concept maps are really just what I was talking about. Okay, so you're breaking down each disease process with those simple three questions. Okay, and this might be in a list format. Okay, so like I have on the bottom here with the three questions, or you can put it in a pretty picture. Okay, so it just depends on what kind of learner you are. If you like to look at pictures and you can remember, you know, those pretty bubbles, then that's the best way to set it up. If you're like me and you just like boom, 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 set it up as a list. All right, I'm going to show you both ways and um, an example with those. All right, so remember to keep it simple. All right, there's so many issues or and so many ideas with every disease process that you can't possibly remember every little thing about it. So if you keep it to these three questions, you can kind of break it down and make it smaller and um, just easier to remember, all right? So remember, what is it, how do we treat it, and what do we teach them? All right, so that first question, what is it? So when we're asking what is it, we're really asking what is the illness or disease process that we're looking at? So i.e., what are the signs and symptoms? What is the patient presenting with, all right? So what does it look like? Okay, and also you're gonna look at diagnostic tests. So how are we gonna prove that that illness is pneumonia or heart failure, okay, so any one of those. So these are the what is it and basically how do we know that it's that disease process. The how do we treat it, that's our step two. This can be broken down into two separate parts. And we're going to break it down to medical interventions and nursing interventions. Okay, so medical interventions being medications, um, surgeries, invasive procedures, all right, anything that nurses cannot order uh, would be our medical interventions. Nursing interventions are going to be bedside care, right? And the example that I'm going to talk about in a few slides is pneumonia, right? So there's lots of nursing interventions with something like pneumonia and pretty much most disease processes, right? This is your second step. How do we treat it? And that third step, what do we teach them? So this really means patient education, right? And as nurses, you're going to be doing a lot of patient education. So you have to teach, think about what you're going to teach them before, during, or after, right? So before meaning those primary steps, right? That primary prevention that you talked about, um, probably in your first nursing class, right? So how to prevent um, the illness from happening again or happening at all. Uh, this can include things like pre-op um, and just items like that, right? So teaching during is obviously when they're in the hospital uh, or in the clinic. And these are going to be based on your best practices uh, for full recovery. So in the example um, of pneumonia, you're going to be teaching them, obviously, to get plenty of rest and drink lots of fluids. All right, so things that are going to help them get better quicker. And of course, after, this is a huge one for nursing, especially in hospitals. So we have to look at patient education for self-care. Right, so how do we keep them from coming back with those same things? All right, so this is a huge one, especially if you're looking at pneumonia and heart failure, uh, MI, all right, any of these where their readmissions um, are so high. So we need to teach these patients how to take care of themselves after they leave the hospital. All right, so how is it going to look? So this is our first example of the list format. Okay, this is my preferred method just because I'm not a pretty picture learner. Um, I'd rather have it just laid out for me. So in this example, we're talking about pneumonia, and I have the three questions here. So what is it? Signs and symptoms of pneumonia, you're going to be short of breath, have chest pain, they might complain of that thick green sputum, um, of course a cough, you're going to hear crackles, right? So remember those signs and symptoms can also include your nursing assessment when they come in um, to the facility. And of course fever, right? So some diagnostic tests to prove that it's pneumonia, you're going to look at a chest x-ray and you have your cultures, your white cell, uh, blood cell count, um, and of course a chest CT. So that second step is how do we treat it? Remember, we have to break this down into medical versus nursing. 
is you have your medical interventions, i.e. your antibiotics, and oxygen therapy. So oxygen therapy is one of those things that can really be a nursing intervention or medical, uh, but as a nurse you really can't technically order oxygen therapy, but you will be the one to apply it. Let's just keep that in mind. So nursing interventions, um, you're going to be the fluids, the proper positioning, like that postural drainage. You're going to be looking at coughing and deep breathing and sinus barometer and oral care. Right, so these are things that how do you treat it? And then finally, what do we teach them? Okay, so we don't want people to come in with pneumonia, so the best way is to prevent. So we're going to promote our uh, pneumonia vaccine and also uh, definitely oral care and hand washing. All right, so that treatment during, it might look like oral care, fluids, IS, basically everything that you're going to do in your nursing interventions and the how do we treat it part. But you're also going to give them information about the disease process itself and, of course, your new medications. And then after, we want plenty of rest and fluids. We're making sure they take those full dose of antibiotics and, of course, their follow-up appointments. All right, so again, that was just an example using pneumonia because it's a pretty easy disease process to look at. Just baking, uh, breaking it down into those three questions. All right, so this is the list format. Right. Here's our example of the picture format of your concept map. And again, it has the exact same things as the page before, so I'm not going to read all of them, okay? but it's just a different way to look at it. So it really just depends on what you like better. If you like that list format, okay, now go back to that like this, and this looks a little crowded just because this is a PowerPoint slide, but it doesn't have to look crowded like that. Right? Or you can make it pretty in your, uh, in your bubble format. So that is concept mapping, and again, it really does work for everything. Right? So the three question concept map, it can work for all diseases, it can even work for different procedures, and of course, like the sequela of um, any disease. And remember to keep it simple. Right? So don't read too much into it. You guys have those huge nursing textbooks and there's just page after page after page of information on every single disease. Keep it simple. Okay? What is it? How do we treat it? What do we teach them? And of course pick a method that works for you. Right? If your brain likes pictures and pretty bubbles, go with that. If your brain likes a list, stick to it. And that is our concept map. See you guys later.